And the British province of Northern Ireland is awaiting final election results set to mark a pivotal moment in the history of the territory. Ballot papers counted so far suggest that the nationalist Sinn Féin will become the largest party. That would leave its main candidate, Michelle O'Neill, as the most likely person to lead the next government. It would be the first time since the partition of Ireland a century ago that the Northern Irish government would be led by a party that advocates the end of British rule there. The main pro-British party, the DUP, has seen its support drop since Brexit, although support for the union with Britain remains strong in the province. I think unionists are very concerned about what uh, a Sinn Féin victory in this election would mean in terms of uh, their divisive border poll plans. That's why we have put forward an effective five-point plan that we believe address all of the issues that matter to people right across Northern Ireland. The work needs to happen, the constitutional change conversation must be had, the health service conversation must be had, all those things need to happen now. But I have said that we're in a decade of opportunity, a decade of opportunity to bring about that change. So we'll work towards that. And I'm pleased to now bring in Neil O'Doherty, a professor of political science and sociology at the University of Galway in the Republic of Ireland. He's also the author of Deniable Contact, Back-Channel Negotiation in the Northern Ireland Conflict. Now, it's nearly a quarter of a century since the Good Friday Agreement set up the framework for the peace process to start in Northern Ireland. So I'd like to begin by asking you, what would Sinn Féin's victory signify in this context? Uh, it signifies a very deep shift in the politics of Northern Ireland and uh, a, a long-term change in the relationship between the two jurisdictions in Ireland. That's not to say that the reunification of Ireland is going to happen in, in the next five years or even in the next 10 years, but certainly the relationship between the two parts of Ireland is undergoing ongoing change and the emergence of Sinn Féin as the largest party with around 30% of the votes and well ahead of the next largest party, the DUP, is hugely symbolic. Northern Ireland was established in the first place as a state for Northern Irish Protestants who wish to identify with Britain and stay in the United Kingdom. And that lasted for around 100 years. Unionists supplied every prime minister uh, for every government in Northern Ireland and for the first time uh, that will not be the case. There will not be a unionist first minister. So we really are looking at a historic first. Uh, what has caused the loss of support for the DUP? Their support has gone in two directions. One to a right-wing unionist challenger who wants them to be even uh, more hardline and more opposed to nationalism and to the compromise that the United Kingdom made with the European Union in the withdrawal agreement. So they lost some votes in that direction, but they all unionists also lost votes to the moderate Alliance Party, which is neither nationalist nor unionist. So there are many liberal unionists who in recent years have been abandoning the two main unionist parties, partly because those parties have ended up on the wrong side of so many debates, most importantly, the debate around the European Union. Many in the unionist community actually voted to remain in the EU, uh, are supportive of maintaining uh, good relations with the EU and are not attracted by the very negative approach, uh, especially of the largest unionist party, the DUP, to the European Union. And how is the unionist community likely to react to uh, Sinn Féin's first minister? It, it remains to be seen, but I think there will be huge pressure on the Democratic Unionist Party to go into government with Sinn Féin and to accept a Sinn Féin first minister. Sinn Féin, after all, has been willing to go into government with the DUP as deputy first minister in successive administrations for the DUP to refuse then to take up the deputy first minister role and go into government with Sinn Féin would be an extraordinary rejection of a system that they have accepted for many years, a rejection primarily on the basis that, that they didn't want a nationalist or, or Republican first minister. Although the DUP's formal reason for not going back into government immediately is they want to see aspects of the withdrawal agreement between the EU and the United Kingdom changed. That agreement ensured that there would be a soft border in Ireland but that has led to the introduction of some controls on goods between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So the DUP is saying that until that agreement has changed, they won't go into government. But I think they will be pressured into government 
relatively quickly because all of the other significant parties want government to get back up and running and are willing to accept a Sinn Féin first minister. Tell us more about the fact that those post-Brexit rules um, imposing border checks between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK, um, how significant of a factor that has been? It was very important in mobilising a unionist base to, to try and change this, but th the issue has developed in a very curious way. Initially, unionist leaders were indicating that they could live with this, with the protocol, that they could accept uh, these limited controls because the agreement actually puts Northern Ireland in a very privileged position, it can trade into the EU as though it's in the EU, and it can trade into Great Britain because it's still part of the United Kingdom freely. So actually, some unions could see the great benefits of this arrangement, but then partly because the British government um, you know, backed resistance to this protocol or you know, showed that it was willing to, to oppose this protocol, um, really pushed unionists in the direction of becoming much more strongly opposed to it. So that became this big touchstone issue for unionists. And the main unionist party, the Democratic Unionist Party, adopted this as a central issue, partly put because they were afraid of losing a lot of their supporters to this right-wing challenger within unionism. Now, you've touched on this just briefly, but I want to ask you, if Sinn Féin emerges with the largest number of seats in uh, the Republic of Ireland in the next elections in two years, how quickly do you think we would see moves toward a united Ireland? Well, the, the first step in any process of that kind is to have a, a referendum, and that would take place in Northern Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland. But the British Secretary of State for Northern Ireland is the only person who can call that referendum, who can make the decision. And they will only do it on the basis that they believe such a referendum would pass. So we might be some years away from that yet. And even if Sinn Féin comes into government in the Republic of Ireland, they will obviously then be able to in increase the pressure for such a move. But the British government has the ultimate say on whether a referendum is called or not. Now, support for Irish reunification in the North is running at, you know, most polls showed it as a kind of 40 to 60 breakdown, around 60 percent or a little less, saying they would vote to stay in the UK tomorrow, around 40 percent saying they would join a united Ireland. But there is, in all of these polls, a big pool of don't knows. And you can see that Sinn Féin is now orienting itself to... Um, mm -hmm. to winning over a substantial number of these don't knows uh, over the next five years, right. five years or so. And the tone of their president, Mary Lou Macdonald, when she spoke about the election results earlier today, was very much uh, aimed mm -hmm. at this middle ground. And, and okay. speaking of Irish reunification as a, a project that could, you know, bring people together. Right. Well, I want to thank you very much, Neil O'Doherty, for taking the time to come on the show. We really appreciate your insights there. Thank you.